Well, today, I thought I'd talk to you about this idea of something different. What about if we discuss today a new approach to life? Wouldn't that be a great one? A new approach to life. So what would that look like? Well, that's going to look different for everyone, won't it? Because everyone is different. You see, think about when you get up in the morning. One of the things that we do unconsciously every day is we survey the conditions of our life. We survey the room, we survey our bed, we go on our computer, we survey our social media. We're taking it. And basically, what we're doing is we're just seeing, is it familiar? Am I used to this? And if something we see, feel, sense, and know is unfamiliar, we're not very comfortable with it, are we? And we do this every day. We do this every moment of every day. And for the most part, we don't even know we're doing it. So I think we could consider this. The first thing we have to come to grips with is that no matter what the conditions, they are not immovable and unchangeable. No matter what the conditions, they are not immovable and unchangeable. I was recently at a Dr. Joe Dispenza week-long intensive. And I've become friends with this couple from California. And on the last day, they said, Reverend Lee, we want you to meet someone. And they introduced me to this woman. And this woman said, I want to share the story with you. And it was about her stepson. She had was her second marriage and it was also her husband's second marriage and her husband had a son who was 25 years old by his first marriage and this is now going back about a year and three quarters ago that this happened and what happened was something happened to this young man and he was in the hospital and three doctors pronounced him dead and because he was going to be an organ donor, the doctors wanted the father to sign the consent to pull the life support. And this woman, his wife, said, why don't we do a healing, a coherent healing on him before we do this? And the, the father, who was familiar with the work, said yes. And so he went to the doctors to have the doctors take out the respirator that was put in him because he realized that with the respirator in, there was no hope. And the doctors did not want to do that. They did not want to do that. But the man said, I have power of attorney. You will do it. And they did. Later that day, the father went into the son who was comatose and said, I need for you to give me a sign. And as he looked at his son's face, he saw his eye just move. Not a lot, but a little bit. And he took it as a sign. The next day he came back and he said to his son, I need to know that you're there. I need for you to speak. The son made a noise like, eh. and the father burst into tears. Last, I think it would have been July of this year, that young man is 26 years old and he got his driver's license. He's fully back. The doctor said it was unexplainable. Three doctors pronounced him dead and he's alive and well today. It's possible. When you hear real stories like that, you know it's possible. 
The second thing we need to think about, we need to do, is to not let any condition influence us to a greater extent than the desire to let them affect us. We can't allow conditions to deter us from where we want to go. We've got to hold ourselves in alignment with where we want to go and who must we become in order to get there. That's critical. We do not let any condition, meaning an external effect, because this is an inside job. The key to living aware is to not judge by appearances, but to rather look beyond the appearance and determine the cause back of it. And the cause is always thought. Here's what we understand. Everything is energy. Science will tell you that. Quantum physics says not only is everything energy, everything is consciousness. Well, you cannot, ex you cannot separate consciousness and energy. Well, then if it's energy, then the frequency of the energy determines the form or the experience that the energy takes. So then the question is, it's not just our thoughts, but what are the emotions that we've attached to the thoughts? Because those emotions give that thought power within our mind. They give the power to believe at a deeper level. So if we've got a high vibration, a high level of emotion, of love, of joy, of beauty, of abundance, of health, and we've attached it to our thoughts, we're shaping that energy. And where we put our attention, our energy goes. And the type of attention we put on it, our energy creates. So we go beyond the appearance to the creative process that we know. You see, knowing that there is a creative power in each of us that responds to the nature of our thought, any negative experience is only the misuse of our personal power. We just didn't focus clearly. In fact, maybe we weren't focused at all. Maybe it was just an unconscious thought pattern that had been developed. And maybe it's been one that you've had since you were a kid and you're constantly re-demonstrating it over and over and over again. It could be a thing is, I'm, I have no friends. I'm not worthy of friends. And you keep, and you go, my God, you're 40 years old and you have no friends. Well, it's a pattern of thought. The law is responding to you now. You have the ability to change that and say, I have lots of friends. I'm friends with many, many, many people. And you become that person who would be friends with many, many people. And that power that is within you will demonstrate it. There's nothing negative in your life that cannot change. People may change, but the condition, you can change it all you can change it all. You see, when we're grounded, grounded in the fact that we know that we're one with all that is, we can walk through life with a sense of security based on our knowing that our relationship to the infinite and that this relationship cannot be disturbed by external conditions unless we allow it. I know that you know people that you have shared experiences with. And when you talk about them, it's amazing that as you describe it, it's not the same experience. I know that. My best friend and I shared a journey to Utrakashi back in 2013, went through a horrific flood. Some of the things we remembered are the same. Some of the things we remember differently. Why? Because it's our mind, it's our perspective and how we look at things. But what I know is I have a relationship with the infinite and no external thing can change me if I choose not to change. When we went through that, I maintained the thing that no matter what, I was safe. And that's what demonstrated. I believe that I'll be on this planet 
as long as I'm creating and I feel juiced about life. I tell you that because if you don't know what your juice is, you got to find it. It's there. You just aren't asking the right questions. But that's a whole other thing to do, to find that juice and to live from that juice aspect. You see, as creators, we understand that we design our life from within, not from without. And when we grasp this, we have claimed the ultimate power. There is a sense of power and peace when we understand that we are in an eternal partnership of creating with the infinite. Just realize what I just said there. We are in eternal, an eternal relationship, a relationship that never ends because the infinite will never end and we're a part of that infinite. So all of our lives will be dedicated to unfolding a greater understanding of its infinite nature, which is our infinite nature. So there's no way we're going to get it in one lifetime, two lifetime, three lifetimes. There are infinite dimensions where we can get it, but we are in partnership with it because we're a part of it. It is us and we are that it. So isn't that just a fantastic thing? Doesn't that just excite you? It does me. It gives me my juice. You see, our oneness with the infinite is not one we have to create, but rather to simply remember it is, it has always been, and it will always be there. You don't have to worry about being worthy. You are worthy. You don't have to worry about being powerful. You are powerful. You don't have to worry about dying because you are infinite. You just transcend this body and this mind. Anything and everything is possible when we use the power that is within us. This is a new approach to living. This is different than what everyone else is doing. Why follow the crowd? Look at what they're creating. Be unique and create as only you can. <laughs>